This is Jerry Cassidy from Project Camelot, Whistleblower Radio, and we are going to have, uh, well, a, a very unusual and dynamic show this evening. We're going to have two guests, uh, my scheduled guest, who is Maxine Taylor, and she's an astrologer and an author uh, of, I believe, two books at this point, and she's going to tell you more about that. Uh, but I'm also going to have David Wilcock on the air with me here who has just received a, a death threat, and we are going to ask our audience to uh, focus, surround him by, with white light and, uh, and protection. We've, we've gotten in touch with some very important people here. Uh, and uh, hold on one second. This is Carrie Cassidy. Uh, do we have David Wilcock and Maxine Taylor? If we could just add them, uh, if, if there is any chance of adding the guests uh, and getting them here on, onto this call. They're I'm here. Bye. Okay, hi, David. You're there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so, so let, me, let me repeat this. David Wilcock has received a, a death threat. Uh, I've asked him to come on my show at the last minute here after I just got a, a notice myself about it. We have contacted the, uh, the necessary people to protect him, and they are, are going to be doing that. But uh, I also am asking the listening audience to surround him with white light and protection. And uh, if, if you have any means to, to, uh, to address this situation from a multiple of angles, uh, please do so. And so go ahead, David, and, and tell your story, and, 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 and let's, let's deal with this. All right. Uh, it's all... It, it's okay. Let's, let's just take it one step at a time. Um, and I just want to say that, that um, you know, you are beloved by many, many people out there, and... Uh, I have contacted a very important person who can who can definitely contribute in every way, um, and and so uh, do do not worry. Uh, whatever can be done will be done on your behalf. And uh, I have to say, I've seen the future, and you're going to be fine. Well, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I've been covering this Fulford story, and um, I released uh, information about something that is much more secret than UFOs. And I have been – I was called today after I put this online, and uh, this particular individual – was called by uh, two different people. And one of them said, do you like David Wilcock? That was how he started the conversation. And, uh, you know, he said that uh, both of these people basically said the same thing, which is that uh, I need to get part two of the article out tonight. Uh, they wouldn't go into detail but I was told that uh, that if I was tortured, that 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 would be lucky, and uh, that probably I wouldn't make it. But that if I get through the next three days, uh, it'll probably be okay but that I would be much safer if I could get this information out tonight because uh, I was led to believe that if, if someone is going to come and, and talk to me and give me the gun or the money game where they try to buy me out or threaten me with death and maybe narco hypnosis or something like that, mind control kind of things, I don't know, but that basically all I have – before that team could show up here is tonight. So I felt like I'm sorry for crying. I... No, David, you you know we're we're with you and uh, really really it's 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 okay. Um, you know you are surrounded by incredible light, as you know. Okay. 
and you are so loved. Um, I, I just can't even can't even say uh, the number of people out there. Uh, the word is getting out. Uh, believe me, this this situation will be handled from so many different directions. Um, and I, I just want you to hang in there and 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 please just stay with us and 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 talk to us about not only this but what the story is that you're being told to keep. To, to, to get out there. You've got this, this forum right here. We've got radio stations. I'm sure that we're going to get some simulcasts out there hooked up. Anyone who knows anyone who's a broadcaster in radio, please uh, ask them to, to, to take this, this free. David, um, you, are, you are totally going to be okay. What's, what matters here is that you, you keep it together and that you are able to tell us the story because this okay. is going to protect you. The truth, okay. we're putting it out there, this is, going to, this is what's going to protect you, okay? Once okay. it's out there, they can't touch you. It's in the public domain, so let's okay. get it out there. All right. <clears throat> I'll pull it together. Fulford has never, okay. I guess, okay, the context. This is what I now know. I have been in co- I've been in touch with Benjamin Fulford. He came out on the scene in 2007, as we all know. And what he ultimately has been saying is that there's an alliance of 117 nations, and those nations are aligned against the Illuminati, which, if you don't know, is the secret political leadership of the G5 countries, and not a whole lot else anymore. They were running a lot of other countries by proxy. They were having puppet dictators running a lot of these countries in the Middle East and in Africa. And those countries are now claiming back their sovereignty. And the tip of the spear of what they have been planning to blow this whole thing open is a lawsuit. Fulford has been talking about this lawsuit on his website for at least a year and a half. The website was published. It was filed. Fulford said it would be filed on November 15th. It was filed on November 23rd. It's 111 pages long. It's incredibly intricate. I downloaded it when it first showed up. I thought it was bullshit when it first showed up because they quoted from Wikipedia regarding the Davos World Economic Forum. I wrote a long missive on Benjamin Fulford's website saying that I thought this thing was bullshit uh, after that, the people who were responsible for filing the lawsuit contacted me personally. We began a relationship, which has led to an extensive amount of contact. They have sent me over 500 photographs. They have sent me dozens of documents. These documents apparently have put a bounty on my head. I now have seen the Book of Maklumat, the Book of Codes. I have seen the exact documentation that will bring these people down. It's in my possession. I am soon going to be getting it, very soon going to be getting it to other people who already have the Wilcock file. You people know who you are. Please do not inspect the file. Only go with Category 1 distribution if something happens to me, if you... Look in the revealing folder. I have a list of criteria. Do not release Category 2 unless the criteria of the revealing folder are met. At least three of the points in that folder must be met before you release Category 2. But Category 1 would only occur if I am killed. Okay, If you don't hear from me in three or four days, then go ahead and put it out there. In addition to that, if I put out a code phrase, as you guys know, because it's in the revealing folder... And that code phrase says that if you see that in my next update, then you have to go with distribution plan one. And that's all in the folder. Okay, so this is what we need to do. This is the plan that I put in place. I never expected I would need to use this. Carrie, you know I told you I recorded everything. It's it's a betrayal, but I recorded everything that happened when I was on the phone with uh, Henry Deacon. I told him this when he was out here. That's part of what's in that file. There's a lot of other very juicy things in that file. Don't make me do this, please, okay? Um, I mean, okay. 
I got to calm down. So these people, here's the story. Adam Smith, the Wealth of Nations, 1700s, wrote this document in which he said that if countries hold gold, that they are a risk to the world. This is the basis of what everything else that follows in the story comes from. Adam Smith, the Wealth of Nations. The argument was that the people who hold the gold could take it out of one country and move it to another, that therefore a country's national sovereignty is at risk if they have gold. Any one country that is on the gold standard or any precious metal standard is a risk to the rest of the world. They become a detriment to the world. The argument was that the gold has to be kept off of the market, kept out of the international market. This is the biggest secret. The gold had to be confiscated so that originally the idea was that wealth would be created in proportion to the amount of wealth that the people of that nation are creating. In other words, the country issues fiat currency against the wealth created by their nation. The problem was if you have a gold standard and you have people being born and they make more things and they create more wealth, there's no more extra gold. And so the price of money goes up, which means if people have money, it becomes worth less and less and less and it destroys the country. So ultimately you have to eliminate the gold standard in order to prevent against inflation, like you saw in Weimar Republic Germany, where people have money in a wheelbarrow to buy a loaf of bread. And this plan moved forward with the British Empire, secretly run by the Rothschilds, working as a proxy, where they knew that 85% of the world's gold was contained in Asia. The reason why it was in Asia was that the world's, the, the, the people of the world, including the Roman Empire and the Spaniards much later, were taking all the gold in the world, and they were using that gold to pay for things that were coming from China, Asia, Indonesia, including things like spices that were very exotic and unavailable anywhere else, ceramics such as fine silks with beautiful patterns and colors, uh, very fine china and pottery, these elaborate vases that had gold leaf painting on them of dragons and things like this. People wanted this stuff. It was way better quality than anything else in the world, and they paid for it in gold, and somehow, because China had really good stuff, they ended up with most of the world's gold. Um, is this all clear so far, Carrie? Uh, well, it, it is as a historical, uh, okay. you know, sort of history. But 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 at this moment, I think the people are going to be confused as to why this has centered on you. Okay. Um, it turns out that. The Rothschild slash British Empire invaded Japan and used Japan to go after China. There was Emperor Hirohito in 1921, went to London, and they created the Bank of International Settlements. A secret treaty was made at this time. Fulford has been given this information. He's not apparently used about 90% of the information that these people have been giving him. I don't know why, but it was given to me, and I'm trying to give it to you as fast as I can right now. In 1921, the Bank of International Settlements was created. They created a plan, a very secret plan, in which all the gold in the world would be confiscated and put under deposit secretly. That did occur. It occurred through Hirohito and his Japanese army in a plan called Golden Lily, where they invaded China and they plundered the gold out of China. First, they came in, they came in with bandits. The bandits robbed them of the gold, killed people. Then the Japanese army comes in and says, oh, you got a bandit problem, we'll save you. When in fact, it's two sides of the same coin. The gold was stored in various locations. Now, here's the important part. There are two million tons of gold on deposit held by the Bank of International Settlements and the Federal Reserve. Secretly, the countries of the world have this money on deposit. The amount of money in actual terms of the spot value of gold, based on my calculation of the spot price of gold as of four days ago, the amount of money that they actually have is 11 million trillion dollars. Everything you think you've been told about how gold is scarce is not true. This is the biggest secret. This is what people are shitting their pants and they do not want me to talk about.